Okay, so here we are for the second game. Um, you get to choose because we're last, so we don't start. I'm not going to click the right on the next start in any case. This hand is fine. Um, we have the lands we need to cast the assassin, essentially the last party. We can't cast the rock yet, but it can't wait. I wouldn't mind having the rock in, uh, in turn 6 or 7. Um, if we can manage that, it, that would be fine. It, he, has a, he has shown some dorks that we can bounce off, uh, which is also good. We'll, we'll just start with the guild gate, follow up with the assassin into the sentry, and they can do all of damage against the rock to stack if he doesn't have something like a lower crew to stop the sentry. He's taking a mulligan. And here's the guild gate. This uh, once again I could play the plane instead of the swamp, but it uh, it adds nothing um, for our spells because we don't have something like some spark with him. Um, and uh, now he might think we don't have white mana or have boarded into a rackle stick or something like that. Up here comes his uh, threat freak. Uh, it's uh, a shame he's, he's basically stealing the damage range from us right now. Not a launch party, that's not bad. So we'll just send the assassin in to get on his life and play the sentry. Uh, I think if we get the option, I'll trade the sentry with this red freak. Because I, I'm not convinced that it would uh, it would really win the race for us. There's another red freak, but I'm definitely going to block this. It's okay, you can't activate this. Oh, this is a great draw. I really would like this angel right now. Um, we need lands at this point. Any land would do to activate launch parties. Um, any one of the, of the cheap creatures is great. Sorry, the rest would be a really great guy to draw right now so you can detain the sweat freak and then be ready to block it next turn. Or detain whenever a fat guy comes now and still block the sweat freak next, next turn. To also keep the death right shaman away. Uh, he probably wouldn't want to play it in the last time. There's Lover Crew. It uh, really doesn't stop the flow killer system. Or his uh, Rootborn defenses doesn't do anything for us as well. Three more damage. <coughs> and that's great giant. I really need a land. Ah, I'm sorry, Celeste, that's great. And at least buys us uh, a bit of time. So here comes the session again. And the rest of is going to chain up the blood prey giant. At least his hand is empty, so this is what, what we're getting and probably what he's going to throw off the top. So he's, uh, we, we have a lot more options right now, we just need, need to draw into them. If he's going to attack, um, I'll have to trade the Azorius Resta for the Sweat Freak. Um, it's not like we, we are attached to throw kill assassin, so I, I'll just try it away for the lunch party when we have a chance. Okay, he's not attacking at all, that's, that's even better. Means we can block with the arrestor and then use it for the large party. Just to shove the assassin in his face again. Okay, if I don't wait. I will probably want to attack with everything. Oh, he does not trade that much, so let's take it on. So I'll just block this guy. For life, not in this guy. He's the rest to do so. He still leaves us with a, a damage free turn, which is really great. And it, uh, it, it solves the biggest problem on the board for us, the Blood Fairy Giant. He doesn't have any follow up, which is also great now. Well, we, we, we're getting options now. Um, we could play the lunch party, but it would kill our Choke Kill Assassin, which I'm not really excited about. Uh, I'd rather just. 
hope that he does the removal spell, play Nightly Valor on the Focal Assassin attack. Um, if he has a removal spell, we'll be in bad shape. But all our alternatives are just sitting and waiting, and that Lobber Crew is going to take us down as soon as he finds uh, um, more instances of his own, then the Death Rite Shaman is going to clock us off really fast as well. So we need to take the risk here and hope that it sticks. And here comes his own launch party. It's over spree. Now well, that's basically game. Um, we're taking two from Lobaku, we're taking two from Shmau, we're taking two from Shatrik, and then the next turn we'll take two again. So this game is over. Um, I, I don't feel like um, I played wrong. I could I could have played the large party, um, killing this Red Freak or the Lobber Crew. But then we'd still lose to the Death Rice Man because we don't have anything to put pressure on him. He's getting instant source which he has our large party, the other large party. Um, he's got he's still got his own Augur Spree. So we wouldn't have won this game in any case. We, we can look at our next draw, skinning a pressure sewer chamber. Well, these guys would be be able to to block, to attack, but they wouldn't be able to, be de to deal those 8 damage that we need to have done. Um, so that's basically it, and it's over. It, it's, it's a bit of a letdown for the first draft review. Um, it was a weird draft, a buy in the first round, and then we played against a really good Ragnos deck. So, um, I don't think it's bad that I lost to this. It was, it was a really good deck. That's how I like to draft my Ragnos. That's why I'm all over Ragnos in my articles. And uh, well, there you have it. That's how the deck wins. So I'll do more of these. Um, I'll try to <laughs> find better software to keep the drafting on these. But I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, just keep looking out for things I post for Unlimited. So thank you for watching, and see you next time.